multi-species swarms of social microorganisms as moving ecosystems. This is a paper by Eshel Ben Jacob, Alin Finkelstein, Gil Ariel and Colin Ingham. We can consider the swarm a group of, as a group of moving objects. There's some sort of coordination between these objects. In fact, not all the objects can have to be the same. A swarm can be heterogeneous. Importantly for this paper, a swarm can be microbial. It can be composed of one microorganism or different microorganisms. Let's have, conduct a thought experiment where we think about a swarm of bacteria. This is such a swarm. This is P. vortex. It's about a one centimetre across droplet of the microorganisms and only a small fraction of the microbes are swarming. Here's another swarming P. vortex colony. The setup is very similar to the previous colony, but the organisms are a lot more diverse in their trajectory and they're a lot more motile. What's important here is that the organisms are carrying objects. In this case, the objects they carry are black beads, but it's also possible that the objects are other microorganisms. So, in our thought experiment, we have a Petri dish, and part of the Petri dish has got ampicillin in it. Ampicillin is toxic to P. vortex. So P. vortex is going to have problems swarming and colonizing this part of the Petri dish. Let's consider a second scenario. In this case we have a non-motile bacterium. This obviously can't migrate. So neither organisms can succeed alone. Let's now inoculate a mixed population of the bacteria, the cargobactam, which can degrade the antibiotic, and the P. vortex. In this case, the combination of the two microorganisms succeeds where the individual failed. Let's rerun the experiment now. So let's leave the antibiotic out of the equation. But let's have the same mix of microorganisms as before, the transporter and the cargobacterium. The outcome is actually quite different. Individuals of P. vortex moving more rapidly than the rest escape the main colony. They leave behind the cargo bacterium and they colonize the new niche themselves. So they're much more successful. So the cargo bacterium lost out. But maybe that's not surprising because it didn't really contribute anything to the success of the swarm. It's a bet hedging strategy. So how do you study this kind of thing? Well, there's lots of ways, but one way is to make movies of the combination of swarming bacteria with their cargo and then use those movies and the information that you have from other experiments to make simulations of how P. vertex swarms and how it carries cargo organisms. This is an example of a simulation. In this case, we're just looking at P. vortex alone and we're looking at how the rotating colony holds together and moves. In the paper, we talk about other systems. So there's other situations where two different microorganisms come together. One aids the dispersal of the other and may get something back in return. So another system is algae, which are taken up by slime molds, and the algae can move inside the slime mold and give benefit, both grow, accumulate in different areas, and give benefits to the slime mold in terms of stress resistance. We also look at mycelial systems, where the mycelia move between different water-bound droplets of soil. And this can allow the mycelium to cross air gaps in the soil. The mycelia then can act as bridges for bacteria who can also bridge those gaps. So the paper considers all of these things about particularly how mixed groups of microorganisms can form swarms and the interactions that happen between the microorganisms in these swarms. We ask, is this a form of ecosystem? And if it is, does it matter? So I hope you'll read our paper. It's out now in Trends in Microbiology.